Okay, I've completed my last double crochet. So now here, to go up, usually we do three, but I'm just going to be doing two to go up to these, okay? So here I just go one, two, I'm going to turn my work over. And now here, I'm only going to be working through the back loop of the chain, which means through the back part here, there's a front and a back. I'm only going through that back part. Um, so that I, Because what I want to do is I'm going to have some little ridges on the thin, so I wanted to create that. And the way I do that is by working only in the back. Here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a decrease over the first two. So I'm going to do two double crochets together. I yarn over. I'm going to go into the back loop only of that first, not this stitch, but this one here. So that next chain right here. Going to go in there. I pull up my yarn. I don't, I'm going to pull through the two. Leave those two there. Yarn over again. Go into the next chain, only in the back part. I'm going to have four loops. I'm going to go through the first three. I have two left and go through there. So I created two into one. And now I'm just going to do one double crochet in each back loop only. Okay. So you're going to do that all the way across. And it's going to create a little ridge for us. So I want you to continue all the way until you finish every single stitch just like that. And if you can see that it's going to create that little ridge for us. So one double crochet in the back loop only. Okay, I'm coming to my last stitch there. So I'm going to do my last double crochet in the back loop only. To go up to the next row, I chain two, one, two. Normally we have three for a double crochet. But in this tail, I'm making it a little bit less, a little shorter. And now here, there's no decreases. You just do one double crochet in every stitch, but only in the back loop. So we're skipping that first one because that's not that stitch right here. A yarn over, and we're going to go into our stitch right here. So you just start doing one double crochet in every stitch in the back loop only, okay? So you have that little chain, that that uh, stitch that looks like a little chain. So you, this is the front, and that's the back. We're working only in the back loop. So do that in every stitch. And then your last stitch, of course, will be there here on top of this decrease that you did in the beginning. So go ahead and do one double crochet in every stitch back loop only so that we could create our little ridges. Okay, I'm coming to my last stitch here. So my last double crochet, there's on top of that stitch here. Right there. Do my double crochet. Go to my to go up to my next row. I'm going to go ahead and do my two, one, two, turn my work over, and once again here I'm going to do another decrease. So over the this first two stitches, this one and this one, I'm going to turn it into one. Yarn over, go in there. Pull to the first two, yarn over again, go into my next stitch. I have four loops there, go to the first three, then my second two. And now here, I'm just going to do one double crochet in every stitch, only in the back portion. So I'm just making that little fin here, decreasing it in every other row. If you don't want your tail to be quite so... Um, wide as mine, you could decrease every row, um, but it will just be a thinner, a more narrow tail. So mine, if you can see it here, let me focus this. It's starting to um, get a little bit narrower in here, shorter. So this is going to be kind of like this, but I don't want it to be too pointy. That's why I'm doing it, you know, every other row. So go ahead and continue one double crochet in your back chain there only and I'll come back and then we'll do the next row okay I finished my last stitch so now on this next row there's no decreases so chain two turn your work over I'm really sorry this guys this camera just keeps wanting to focus on me so now here we're just going to go in every stitch and we're just going to do one double crochet in the back loop only okay no decreases here we're just working in this back loop, doing a double crochet in every row. So 
I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll come back and the next row is our decrease row okay so every other row we're working a decrease and then this so here the next row is just one double crochet in each one and we are going to continue that same pattern here so here's one two three four five until I have nine rows so here our first uh, excuse me no until we have uh, seven rows and then the eighth and ninth row are a little bit different so here go ahead and just finish gosh I can't even read my own writing that's pretty bad so here I'm just going to continue one double crochet in every stitch and we'll come back and work our next decrease row together okay so here I finish one double crochet in every stitch back loop only so now here our next row is a decrease row so once again you chain yarn chain two turn over and then we're going to do a decrease in our first two stitches so here's decrease oops guys I'm having a hard time here pull through the first two chain over yarn over I mean go to the next stitch and now we have our decrease there and now you just do one double crochet in every stitch back loop only so I'm going to go ahead and do that all the way across and then when we do our next row our next row will just be one double crochet in every stitch no decrease for that next row so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll come back and then we'll work one double crochet in every stitch in the next row okay I'm going to go up to my next row this is my decrease row so my next row has no decreases chain two turn your work over and when we do one double crochet in every stitch back loop only so I hope I'm not boring you but we're just trying to shape that little fin here so we're just going in the back loop one double crochet all the way across on here and it will start taking shape so go ahead and finish that all the way down okay so I want you to be repeat the same pattern that we've been doing until you only have four stitches left so basically like right here that we had a decrease my next row would be just one double crochet in every stitch with no decrease so it would be one in every stitch in the back loop and then the next row would be a decrease in the beginning and one double crochet to the end then repeat it by one double crochet in every stitch and then you repeat your decrease so basically your piece is getting narrower and narrower until it's going to be let me see if I could move this back here so you guys can see what I'm talking about with this here so right here you're going to keep working until this is like really tiny here and there's only four stitches one two three four left there okay so go ahead and continue doing that pattern until you have only four stitches and we're going to make two of these okay so let me go ahead and do that and then i'll come back and show you what it looks like when there's only four stitches left my next row here then since i have a decrease my next row will just be chain two and then one row of one double crochet in every stitch without a decrease then my next row after that would be one um, decrease in the beginning and then uh, two double crochets together basically and then one double crochet in every stitch I'm going to continue this pattern until when I count my stitches I only have four stitches left and then I'll come back and then we'll sh I'll show you exactly what that looks like okay okay I finished doing both of my um, little tails here this is where I began and I ended here and this side same side so what you're gonna do now here the end of course is the end where you ended is where you were doing your um, one row with decreases one row with that so here they are I'm going to take a little needle a, a tapestry needle and then I'm going to thread you're going to thread your tails this one might be a little bit short if it is I might just have to thread cut a, a strand of a yarn and do that over again you're going to do this for both of the tails okay 
So what I do here, you're just going to get your yarn where you end it, and I'm just going to kind of just gather it along the edge here, just like that. And see that there's that stitch so you don't have to worry. I'm just trying to gather it to shape the bottom portion of the little fin, okay? Because it has like two sections of the fin, that's why we get two separate ones. I tried to do it with just one, but I didn't like the way it looks, so I had to try it a different way. So I want you to do this for both of your pieces, just like that, all the way across, just like that. So once I pull it out, I can gather this, and you could gather it tighter or looser, whichever way you want. So do that to both sides, and then here, I'm going to go ahead and do this on this one. Hopefully the tail is long enough, and then we will come back, and then what you're going to do is you're going to... Um, choose which side you like better like I'm just gonna put it this is the bottom here's the waist okay and I did make it long enough so that you could even use this for a cocoon if you make it a little wider for a baby okay so here you're going to once you do both of these I'm just gonna lay it here with this top up here so one side will be like this and if you think that's too wide you can pull it tighter and you know make it or, but I like to kind of make them, if I just do it straight like this, it kind of doesn't give the same shape. See that? So I like to kind of tug it a little bit like this. Just to give me that that shape. And then that little tip is going to be right there. Okay? And if then I could just kind of crunch it up. And I'm going to sew it one side on that side. And then once I crunch up my other one, it'll be crunched up like this. Then I'll sew this one on the other side, and it'll give me that fin tail. See, that's I like the way it looks that way. So go ahead and gather the other side, and then we'll come back and we'll start sewing that on there. Okay, so I've gathered both pieces. As you can see, this is the piece that had the longer strand, and this one's a little bit shorter. Um, so it, either way, it's going to work. So what I'm going to do here, remember, we're going to sew in these tails to get them out of the way. So here you get your piece and you're going to be able to see that one side well I have the stitch marker but you could see the little line going up there that is going to be the part that goes to the back that's the back and then the babies will wear this part to the front. So you just get your piece you don't have to worry if you sh sew this part shut when you're sewing on the little fins because the baby's feet aren't going to go down there their feet usually start like up here more you know because it is pretty long. So then you get your piece, they're both this way. So I'm just going to, this one, put it on this side. And then I want to flip the other one over, just like that. So here, you're going to lay your tail. This is that funny little beginning where we started. And you're just going to put that piece there, put this other piece here. They're just gonna touch, kind of touch there in the beginning just like that okay so I just kind of gathered it and if you want it a little bit bigger a little bit less spread you could put it up like this so your fin will look a little bit larger if you want the fin tighter then you just go ahead and go pull the thing tighter if we just left it straight like uh, like say we just didn't gather it and you sewed it on it's just going to look really weird like that so when you gather it, it gives it more of that fin shape. So I'm just going to pull this down. And when once you decide how big or how loose you want it, I like it. You can use these rows. Make sure you count here to make sure the both fins are even. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would say, like, I'm going to start my tail here. I'm going to put it there because we want these to meet in the middle. And then if you say one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So my last row is going to be on the sixth one. Or if you want it bigger, then do it higher, okay? That's up to you. I think I want to do mine to like a seven row, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably there. And then this one would be the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then I want to pull this open a little bit just to reach that row right there just like that and now I'm going to go ahead and fasten this off so that it doesn't get too much bigger um, usually it's easier to do it when the I should have really cut this tail I know I told you to leave a long tail and 
my tail was not long enough that I left. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and make a little knot here to fasten this off. Okay. Just so that it doesn't un come undone. Oh, that's a little bit harder. Should have done it longer. Oh no. I feel like those people do as I say, not as I do. So I'm going to just take the thread there. So now I could just make my little knot. It's not going to lose its shape anymore. And then you could do the same thing here on this side. I'm not going to tie this one yet because I need to do the Spanish portion. So then since this one was too short, I'm going to get a piece of yarn that I've already clipped. If I, oh, I'm going to clip it here. Haven't already clipped. To use this to, um, to use this to sew this. So all these tails, I'm not really worried because I'm going to sew those in when I'm finishing. So all you have to do then, if you want to use a bobby pin or something safety pin to hold it, that's okay. You could start at the top or at the bottom because remember we're going to count our rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I like to start at the bottom. So I'm going to lay this a little bit overlapping right there so that this piece, let me see if I could get closer so you guys could see it. Let me see here. Oops. I'm so sorry guys. So that this little tail here is going to be kind of mating in the middle there. Okay. Just like that. And then that's the first round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our last piece is going to be right there. So I know to keep it on track. Okay. And sometimes I put a pin or something on there. So here, I'm just going to come in through the piece here. Attach, oops, sorry. I have to put this here first. That first little stitch there, just right there the corner I want it there. I'm going to start from the bottom go through there. You don't have to go through both pieces you could just do the top one. We're just trying to hold it in place right there just like that. Let's see if I could get back more. I don't think you could see what I'm doing. So here I put the, the yarn through there. Don't, don't uh, pull it all the way through. We're going to sew the same way on the other side and then I'm just going to go through here and just grab that piece. Okay. I want to go back down here. And I'm going to make my little knot. And remember that these knots, all these tails, you're going to sew them in. Um, and someone asked me how do I keep them from coming out. Once I sew them back, I use a little bit of um, fray check and it seems to hold it in place. So I really should have left a longer tail, but I'm just trying to show you guys. Here, so once it's in place, remember I said one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then on this last stitch, there is going to be my last stitch. So then you just start sewing it this way along the edges, going up. It's not going to really show that much, it's not a real stiff tail. If you want it to be super stiff, then you would need to use like two strands of yarn but here I'm just sewing up the edge just like that see it's gonna hide the yarn it doesn't really show very much at all so you just get one of the edges here and then you just sew onto the post here on the edge and if you're using the same yarn if you see it's not really showing too much so here's one, two, three, four, five, six. I want my last stitch to be there. Let me pull it a little bit more. Maybe it's going to be a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, it's not seven, six. So if you want, you could put a stitch marker to hold it or you could just use your hand. Remember, you want it to be the same on both sides. And this is just how I'm going to just continue sewing it. It's not like super complicated. I'm just trying to get that little tail on there and I'm sewing it onto the po the edge posts that, that are on the edge. So let me see here. Six. Okay, it's going to be ending right. Yeah, it is going to be. I put a little bit there. And I believe that's the last one. 
Okay. That's my last stitch here. I'm going to reinforce it there. I'm going to go to the back. And so here, that's just how I sewed it. There's nothing fancy about it. Now I could attach these two tails, make a knot, but remember that this, um, actually I don't want to make a knot there. Let me grab this one. And, and then I'm going to sew these tails in. I don't want them to be showing. So this might be a little bit harder. I'm going to grab this yarn, go in and out, in and out, in and out. Several times going back and forth. And then go up and down. Sometimes I use smaller needles. So this side here, I kind of grab that tail. I'm going to put a little dot of fray check so that won't show. And on here too, I put, trim it off, and then I'll put a little bit of fray check. You could stretch it a little bit so it hides into the work. Making sure not to cut the actual tail. So now here, I'm going to sew the other side the same way. Just up there, they're going to kind of um, lay over a little bit. See the tips? Because this is the center. I'm going to put it there. And now I'm going to sew all the same way. And I'm going to make sure that my last stitch matches the other side. Just like that. So I'm going to start sewing on this side. I'm going to get a piece of yarn. Cut my strand and go out. And then, of course, I'm going to um, hide all my tails. Sew this tail in. So the tail in here that's in here and then um, make sure that you tie this so you're you can tie it now or you could tie it when you finish make sure that you go up the same row so here's there's one two three four five six and then seven I finished at the that last row so here if you use that same round you can go around and you know that your last stitch is going to be there and your first stitch is going to be here Okay, there's nothing complicated. You're just going to sew it the same way. I'm going to sew this side on the Spanish video, and then this one's already done. We'll hide in our tails, and then we'll just do our little drawstring for the waist. So you could see that this tail is done. So what I'm doing here is that I just wanted to show you that I'm going to line use the same row to know that's where the last part, my last stitch is going to be there. So that the tail is even okay you don't want it to be below or, or above so if you could do is I'm just going to be my first stitch right here in the beginning is going to be right there they're going to kind of um, lay over a little bit not really a lot okay just right there so my first stitch is going to be here just like I did on this side and then you can follow the, the row here and we know that this is going to be my last stitch there. If you want, you can put a safety pin or something to hold it there in place because we want to make sure that the tail, the fin is even, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this one for the video tutorial in Spanish, just the same way I did here. Go all the way up and then I'm gonna end there. I haven't made my knot here, so then I'll make my knot there to make sure it doesn't um, uh, unra ungather. And then that'll be the tail. I'm going to be using one of these little stitch uh, they're knit holders just to make sure that I don't go past that row so once I put it right here I'm just going to hold it there in place just to help me so it doesn't stretch out or lose its shape just like that right there well, if I could put it in there just do the work right there okay and then that way I can sew without worrying that I'm going too far or too low Okay, now as you can see I've sewn the other side here and so now you can see that you're not really going to be able to see those um, that yarn because it's the same color I sewed in all my tails through the back to make sure it didn't show through the front uh, when I got to here to the bottom I connected the two tails now I just need to sew my tails in either working them together and then in this one sew these other tails into the work so now that part is done now to do the waist, you want to have a little drawstring. See how long it is? So it's going to be um, long enough for even an older child. 
or you could make it like I told you if you don't want it that long you could make it shorter just put it on your child to do the drawstring there's two ways to do it I'm going to crochet a chain and usually I start at least 85 chains to 120 and that I'm going to just finish that and then thread it through the waist if you don't want to do that you could also get a really pretty ribbon because they photograph really pretty remember this is probably going to be used as a photo prop it can also be used this is long enough to be used as a cocoon for a younger baby if you're going to do it for a cocoon of course then you're going to have to have it wider like probably um maybe 90 90 stitches or you know up to 120 so the shoulders could fit but this was made just for the tail so here go ahead and i'm going to be again my waist i'm going to chain 120. Okay, I've done the 120 chains. Now I'm going to pull the this little string through the second row here from the top of my um, double crochets there. I'm going to pull it through uh, uh, so that I could form a drawstring. Now you don't have to do this, but it's easier. I find it's easier if I just go ahead and thread. I left a tail here and I thread my needle and it makes it easier to pull it through or else you're going to have to be stranding it and it's a little bit harder. Um, so I mean that's just something that I like to do so I'm just gonna thread my needle just like this and so then here remember that the part where you see that little row coming up that's the back that's for the back you don't want to start it there and that's why we put this tail on top to cover the back there and look at how pretty isn't that a pretty shape I think it looks really good like a actual fin so anyway I worked hard to get it that shape guys <laughs> so here in the middle I'm going to go ahead and go down and I'm going to just um, kind of fold this here so I could know that's okay this is kind of like the center I'm going to get my um, needle here and I'm just gonna come from the actually it doesn't matter here I'm just gonna come up and about every two strands you don't have to do it in every single one it comes out too bunchy so here I'm gonna skip two see how there's two there one two and I'm gonna skip two and go down again and come back up through the next two See how easy it is to pull it through versus trying to pull that through with your hand. I'm going to go all the way around like that. Every two post. Just like that. See how easy it pulls through. I don't have to be struggling with it with my hand. Um, I just find that it's easier to do this way. So just go. And if you have a plastic needle, that's fine as well. So just go all the way around. I'm going to go all the way around and then when I finish I could just trim off those little tails see just here's one two there's my second one all the way I'm going to come back when I finish and I'll show you what that looks like okay I have threaded it all the way through here so now here my tails you just wanted to make it long enough so that you could um, just be able to tie a little um, bow and like I said, if you don't want it with the, the tail of the crochet, you could also do it with a ribbon. So once I just tie it, it's already through. What I do with my tails is I just get the tail. Let me see if I could get closer so you guys could see better. I mean, it's just such a small detail. That I don't know if it makes a difference, but I just pull it through there. And then I'll just pull my little tail this way out. So I just have that little thing there. And then I'll just cut off the end. I don't know. I just like to do that. Do Ooh, I really love the way the tail is, that little fin is shaped. Don't you? Really love it. I hope you guys will make a lot of these. So my my little um, thing, uh, my mermaid tail uh, photo prop is done. And so I just went ahead and trimmed the other little thing here. I want to thank you guys for for uh, sharing your day with me. I'm going to apologize for the second video being a little bit late. But I don't know if some of you, if you follow me on Facebook, please go over there and visit. Um, my mom was uh, has been sick and she was in the hospital for over two weeks. And she just was uh, sent home now. And so I've been having to go over there and uh, help her and make sure she's uh, getting her insulin, that she's eating well. So right now that has to be my number one priority. So anyway, I will start try to post some more of the videos. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button. And uh, if you don't know how to subscribe, you just go underneath uh, the video here. There will be a subscribe button that uh, it's on the 
video description box where it tells you information about the video hit that button it also you can subscribe and then it will notif you will get notified whenever there's a new video uploaded please help me grow my channel by sharing the videos with your friends and family I hope you'll make a lot of these little um, tails they're super cute and very popular thanks for watching hit that like button and remember always that God loves you